Would you state your name? Yeah, Peter Warner Wolfgram. Peter, uh, we met, I took your picture one day on State Street. You were riding down State Street. You were right in front of the Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be a better than average picture. Uh, you don't take a bad right. picture though, <laughs> I can tell. I've taken many bad pictures. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. And then um, uh, other colleagues of mine liked the picture and the issue became how to find you and ask permission if we could take your picture and put it on a postcard which you were kind enough to grant us, but, but I haven't done yet. So that's how we met. Yep. And then we bumped into each other like twice in two days. <laughs> yeah. So, and you've already met my wife who came along too. So uh, it seemed like uh, that's what you call a fast friendship, huh? Definitely. Something yeah. like that. So uh, you volunteered to come on the show here and talk because you ride your bike quite a bit. Yeah. Tell me about your bike riding. Have you always been on your bike? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I grew up biking. Um, my mom has epilepsy, so she wasn't able to drive uh, as we were growing up. And so we would just bike everywhere. We'd bike to the grocery store. Um, I grew up and she would, she would bike with us to the grocery store in a burley in the back of the, the bike and then throw all the groceries with us in the bike. It was a common source of transportation for me. So she was able to ride a bike? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, that's a different story. Yeah. 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 Um, and then when I moved out to college, I... Um, just didn't feel the financial security and I knew that a bike is very cheap. I chose to ride my bike everywhere and it was a really awesome choice. It, I think it really grew me to the person that I am to, today. Finding myself doing really long bike rides. Yeah. The longest bike ride I did was 242 miles. It started with little steps of like just biking, biking out to Goleta and being like, wow, that's awesome. I can go anywhere. And then one time I biked home for the holidays and I was like, whoa, like nobody needs a car. Then uh, I biked a hundred miles down to San Diego. It was uh, like 180 miles total, but uh, we had somebody uh, traveling with us uh, like in a car they helped us along in a few sections. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it was just a hundred miles total, which was very incredible. And nice. we were, me and my best friend, Nick, were quite exhausted by the end of the day. And then you take the train home. We were actually going down for a conference in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Neither of us had the most, most money at the time. And so we were like, let's bike. Like, let's not pay for gas. Let's just bike. <laughs> And neither of us said no. It was a bad idea from the start. Right. We didn't, we had mountain bikes. So we had, we were oh. not set up oh. for it by any means. We made, we, we just, we just went with it. It was a cool adventure. You mentioned the economics of bicycling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think more people, you observe that too. More people are waking up to that. Did you observe that with your friends as well? Um, my, my sister actually just got an e-bike because she wanted to have an easier alternate source of transportation, kind of cut down on that gas bill a little bit. So yeah, definitely. An e-bike will pay for itself oh, with, yeah. uh, your, uh, what you're not spending on gas, huh? Yeah. Now I've uh, checked out your Instagram page and we, we talk about the insights into Peter the man. Yeah. On your Instagram, uh, but uh, your sister is featured prominently. Mm -hmm. Your fondness yeah. for your sister. Yeah, I have three sisters, so uh, I have to be careful what I say because they'll listen. But <laughs> not everybody has a uh, a charming, loving relationship with their sister. But it sounds like you do. Yeah, I do. That's something that I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. And also something I feel like I don't deserve. I feel oh. that um, she has always been very gracious with me. And um, young, especially at younger ages, 
I, I was a brat. I was an annoying little brother. And she was always like um, kind and patient with me. She has really helped shape me to be the person I am today as well. Um, she like has always encouraged me in just being a better person, striving to just do my best. She like she she sees my worth and she helps me find it. And and um, you're willing to listen. Yeah. She always pushes me further in, in like such a kind way, but then is always there to support me as well um, through that process. And I feel feel deeply honored. Very nice. Yeah. And, and I guess like as as I've grown up, there have been there's been a lot of back and forth in the ways we can both support each other well. And yeah, and it's just really it's a sweet relationship. Oh, it's nice. Sounds that, very nice. Yeah, it's one of my biggest pride moments in my life. Very nice. Very well said. Yeah. When I look at your Instagram site, I see trips to Bali and mm -hmm. other exotic travel, Peter. Yeah. Uh, that's a thrill, huh? Yeah. 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 So um, I got to do a lot of travel between the end of 2019 and through 2020. The, the company I was working for shut down and, and to, at the end of 2019. So I, I started by going to Norway to um, take pictures of the Aurora Borealis. I didn't get any good photos. <laughs> <laughs> you I feel okay it. about that. Then. Yeah. I, Cause it was a great trip. Mm -hmm. And like, there was a friend over in Europe that like I got to connect with. He, he came up to Norway and, and said, what's up to me for a couple of days. It was just a cool trip. And same thing with, um, with Bali. Actually, this is a really fun story. So, um, I get back from, uh, Norway and one of my housemates, uh, says like, Hey, my Patagonia trip got canceled. And he's like, would you want to go on a trip with me? I was like, sure. Where do you want to go? He's like, I don't know. Where do you want to go? And like, I was like, hmm. After I got back from Norway, I was like, what's the next trip? What's the next photo trip I would want to go on? And so I looked up lava. I looked up lava around the world. Volcano and lava. Exactly. Yeah. Um, or I looked up active volcanoes and I found that in Indonesia, there's um, blue lava. Um, so it's a, it's a sulfur rich magma. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's a sulfur rich magma on the Island of Java that I was like, Hey, want to go to Indonesia? He's like, yeah, let's do it. COVID had not started yet. Um, but it's the beginning of 2020. <clears throat> we were looking for flights to Indonesia. We found flights for like 433 bucks round trip. Oh, geez. Yeah. It was like, they would encourage it. travel, yeah, huh? Yeah. It was awesome. Um, we booked the flights for two weeks in advance for an entire month. Oh. Um, so we got to do a month long trip there and on our way over there, we flew, we had an eight hour layover in China. And while we were in China, that was the day that Wuhan announced that there was a pandemic. And so that was like, that was like right at the very beginning of everything. And that's a date you'll remember. You'll yeah. tell your grandchildren someday, huh? Yeah. Never really thought too much of it. But um, back to the photos. So we, um, <laughs> I, I went to Indonesia for a specific shot and I got a shot, not something that I was stoked on, but I got some other really awesome shots, which are cool. And really, I made, made a couple awesome friendships and had some awesome experiences. How about your photography today? It's improved? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I have actually um, gotten a new camera. So we got the, the GH6 as opposed to the cool. GH4. So we got some more megapixels, got a bunch of fun lenses. Um, so this is a macro lens, so I can take pictures of really small stuff. I like taking photos of everything, so. Nice. That's really nice. cool. I'll put a link in the show notes to your Instagram page if you're uh, cool, cool. okay with that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, Peter, what else should we cover? You're uh, at REI these days. People can go in and meet you in person <laughs> if they yeah. want your autograph, huh? Yeah. 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 I'm one of the senior sales specialists in camp currently. Mm -hmm. I've been there for just under three years. Oh. That'll be three years in February. It's a place I fit in well. I love outdoors and adventures and people and 
um, it, it's a cool, it's a cool spot and a really good company too. Yeah. Well, Peter, thanks so much for being on the show today. Yeah, for sure.